Greetings once again, James Hackley, author of the best-selling book, Body, Mind, and Spirit, The Awakening, and welcome. Thank you very much for uh, checking out yet another video blog segment. Today's subject is a little different. Uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of blogs on Body, Mind, and Spirit, The Awakening, but last year, back in October, basically, I went on a 40-day, I guess, a desert experience where I just got away from a lot of people, abstained from social networking, and just decided to go introspective because I wanted 2013 to be even more of a successful, even more of a, an enlightening year for myself and, and those within my sphere of influence. And it was revealed to me that in my 47 years, yes, I've done a lot, with, you know, helping folks change lives with body, mind, and spirit. But in my 47 years in the life that I've traveled, I have a lot of lessons learned. So I, this year, I'm going to make a point to start to share some of those things as well. And one of the questions, top questions that we always hear or we always ask ourselves and those that we know is why do people cheat in relationships? Now, I'm a married man. I've been married seven years. And the answer is very, very simple to me. Even though there are a lot of books that have been written, there are movies out there. Why do folks cheat? But the answer is very simple. And people cheat because of one simple reason, and that is selfishness. Plain and simple. You don't have to read a 300 page book. You don't have to go to the movies. People cheat because of selfishness. Think about it this way. When we come into this world as babies, we are selfish creatures. You know, it's all about me. I want to be fed. I want to be loved. I want to be changed. It's all about me. So we spend the rest of our life, hopefully, trying to get rid of those selfish tendencies and start to think and care more about others. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who are 40, 50 years old, but they're still very selfish. Altruism never enters their sphere because it's all about them. And when it comes to relationships, a lot of times we bring those selfish traits into the relationships as well. Now, I know some of you are thinking about, yeah, cheating, there is sexual cheating and there is emotional cheating. But the reasons why folks cheat, be it sexual or emotional, it's the same thing. It's going to be for selfish motivations. So it's very, it's very simple. Why they cheat? Why we cheat? We cheat for selfishness. But here's a more important question. How, what can we do to keep uh, ourselves or our partners from cheating? And that question is, we can't do anything to keep our partners from cheat. If they're inclined to cheat, they're going to cheat. But what we can, do, can we do to keep ourselves from cheating? We can limit our exposures to situations that we know we're going to be very weak in. As I said a couple of minutes ago, I'm a married guy. I've been married for seven years. And before I got married, I was out there. Anything that a single guy can do, I was doing. So I had that lifestyle behind me. I get married. But you don't forget the things that you used to enjoy doing. You don't forget the people you used to hang out with and all of that stuff. So when I got married, I knew in my mind, the heart of hearts, that I would never cheat. I think that a lot of us do the same. Before we get married, we kind of know if we're the cheating type, if we're not. So here's a little quiz that you can give the person that you're in a relationship with or that you're thinking about being in a relationship. Now sit down, have a discussion about fidelity. Have a discussion about you know, monogamy as well. And ask them, you know, hey, would you ever have sex with a polar bear? Now, they probably look at you quizzical, like, sex with a polar bear, what do you mean? Now, a couple of questions later, then ask them, well, would you ever have sex outside of this relationship? Now, if that if their response is not as quizzical as your question of about uh, having sex with a polar bear, if they don't find that, that, that question as absurd, then there's something you may want to look out for, because the two should be on the same level when it comes to absurdity. Having sex with a polar bear and having someone outside of the the relationship. Because if they can begin to rationalize it, hey, I would never have sex with a polar bear, but a woman outside of a relationship, okay, that's kind of possible or whatnot. I think you understand where I'm headed there. The idea of being less than faithful, it has to be totally absurd to the person. And if it's not, then they're inclined to cheat uh, when the situations present themselves. So why do people cheat? You know, we already said that it's going to be selfishness, but what situations will take a seemingly good person to cheat? I can speak from the man perspective uh, why folks cheat. A lot of times guys say that, hey, you know, the thrill is gone or my girlfriend or my wife, hopefully, you know, she's not doing the things that I desire. So I'm going to look elsewhere. But here's something about the human nature. Whenever we meet someone of the opposite sex and we're attracted to, there's something known as pheromones. Uh, you guys have heard about pheromones as well. That's a given. If we see someone we're attracted to, there's a chemical reaction that happens. And when we first meet that person that we want to be in a relationship with, yes, those pheromones are there and we got the butterflies in the stomach and all that good stuff.
But as the relationship grows and matures, a lot of times those pheromones or those butterflies may dissipate. So we think that, okay, this is ho-hum. So folks are still looking for that, that high. So when we see someone else that we're attracted to, the chemistry that exists between male and female, that's always going to be there. So the best way to keep us from acting on those, those, those pheromones that are inevitable is just limit our exposure. The Bible tells us to flee, not to try to deal with it, not to try to justify, but to flee from you know, sexual or lustful temptations. And that's a very good idea. So we don't want to be in a situation in close quarters with someone who's not in our relationship. Because a lot of times, as you guys know, it starts with an emotional thing. You know, as folks start confiding in you, and the next thing you know, it goes from emotional to the next thing you know, you're doing the horizontal lombada with someone who's uh, who's not your partner. So we want to limit our exposure to other folks as well uh, that we could potentially be uh, tempted to. Certain conversations we shouldn't have, certain memories that we once shared, we shouldn't go there. Uh, certain places that we maybe we used to go to that puts us in that mindset of what we used to do. It's best to limit uh, the exposure to that as well. So that's a little uh, a little synopsis of why people cheat, but I'm very interested on your comments as well. So please feel free to include your comments at the bottom of the blog, Why Folks Cheat. And I encourage you to go to my website. Uh, check out uh, me at uh, www.jameshackley.com or send an email to info, I-N-F-O, at jameshackley.com. God bless. <laughs>